On the 9th of July each year, we celebrate the feast of Our Lady of Aberdeen. And the prayer for that day talks about this holy church of Aberdeen. Now, that doesn't mean simply the city of Aberdeen. It means the whole diocese. It's a very large diocese. It uh, goes as far north as Muckleflugger, the northernmost point in the United Kingdom. It comes down to Dunnet Head, Cape Roth, uh, all the way down to the Great Glen, and then across to the North Esk River, south of Stonehaven. Well, when I became bishop of this holy church of Aberdeen, I expressed the wish, I, I think it's my deepest wish, our deepest wish, surely, that Christ may be real to us. Christ may be real to us, not just a childhood memory, uh, not just a concept, uh, not just a slogan, uh, that he's not reduced, shall we say, just to gospel values or kingdom values, as we sometimes hear, but that he is a real living person for each of us, someone who has a hold on our imagination, on our emotions, on our hearts, on our thinking, on our choices, on our behavior, that, that he is real for us. Well, you know, if there is any time in the year for that to happen, for that to be deepened in us, surely it is now when we're about to embark on the Triduum, the Easter Triduum, Paschal Triduum, as we call it. In, in these, the great liturgies that we will be celebrating, the, the Mass of the Lord's Supper on Maundy Thursday evening, the celebration of his death on Good Friday, the Easter Vigil, which is the very heart and center of the church's year, much too good to miss, and Easter Sunday itself, in and through all these liturgies, the Holy Spirit is at work. The Holy Spirit is reminding us of Jesus, making him present to us through the words and signs and gestures and music and the sacraments, through the whole, complete whole of the liturgy, Christ is close to us, Christ can become ever more real to us and we can have communion with him. So this is a, a privileged time of meeting Christ. And perhaps we can think that this, is the, this was the moment these events in Christ's life, it was the, the climax of his life. The, this was when the reality in him became clear, when who he was shines out in a unique way in the upper room at the Last Supper when he gives his body and blood, in Gethsemane when he's praying in agony to the Father, when he is arrested there and refuses the way of violence when he stands before the Jewish authorities, when he stands before Pontius Pilate and says, yes, I am a king, but my kingship is not of this world. And most of all, of course, when he is on the cross and his arms stretched out and he is praying for the forgiveness of us because we know not what we do perhaps very expressively, the reality of Christ is shown in the blood and water that flows from his pierced heart after he has died. It's as if the truth is out now of who this person is. And in the garden, after 
his resurrection in the upper room on the road to Emmaus by the Sea of Galilee, the full reality of Jesus will break upon the disciples. Perhaps Mary is the person uh, who felt this reality more than anyone else, the reality of his death and his resurrection. And if we could share something of her appreciation, her realization of Jesus, how wonderful that would be. I suppose we all question ourselves, you know, how real are we as people? How real are, are the values we profess or the love we declare? How real is our faith? Are we genuine or are we frauds? Well, I think if Christ becomes real to us, then we will be real. There are those wonderful words of the poet Jared Manley Hopkins. Let him, Easter in us, be a dayspring to the dimness of us, be a crimson cresseted east. May Christ become real for all of us, and then indeed it will be a happy Easter. <laughs>